you. It's really quite simple. If you are black and you are watching this amazing experience, just know that you can do anything. You've come from amazing stock. The legacy is within your veins. And that at the end of the day, if you think it, you are it, you can achieve it. Welcome to the Dripping in Black podcast, where we celebrate black excellence throughout the black diaspora. Here's your host, David V. Lewis. What's up, good people all across the world? It's the Dripping in Black podcast. I am your host, David V. Lewis. And per usual, we have another fantastic guest. Today's guest is Colette Ramsey. Colette, say hello to the world. Hello, world. How's that? (laughs) (laughs) All right. And uh, you all know how we do. We bring Black people on because of their excellence. And we're going to get into Colette's story. Uh, It's an awesome one. I'm excited about it. It's something I know nothing about. So we'll get into the details of that really, really soon. But we begin like we always do asking the simple but complex question of who is our guest so who is colette ramsey colette ramsey is a servant an advocate a daughter Mm -hmm. a friend a confidant a believer Mm. Uh, i think that sums up the essence of of who i am who I desire to be. Okay. All right. That's that's wonderful. Um, were you always all those things? And where did those things come from? Where did they originate? So I, sure. So I believe that I've always um I have always been my person. Now, whether mm. life experiences have introduced me to myself in different ways, sure. Mm. Um mm. it started off as a young child. I mean, I remember Uh, I was nine years old and when Jimmy Carter lost the presidency and I sat on the steps and cried and my parents were (laughs) dismayed and they were like, what is the matter with you? Why are you crying? And I said, this is the end of democracy as we know it. (laughs) They said, what is the matter with you? And I, because I thought Jimmy Carter was everything. And so Mm. if that gives you some kind of inclination, I've always been in tune to everything that's been around me and Mm. its impact on everyone. And so as the baby of the family, I took that mantra as well. You know, it's it's up to me to hold the family together. It's up to me to have the answers. It's up to me to be the voice. And so I, I've been that person as long as I've known myself to be, and I embrace it. Mm. Awesome. Uh, I guess I don't know what, where are you from, but sure. what city, state, and all that. So Absolutely. tell me that. I am from Detroit. I am from Detroit, <laughs> born and bred Detroiter. Um, family is originally from Arkansas. So wow. I do have Southern roots. And um, parents came up here after college to get jobs and start a family. And so I am proud to say I'm a native Detroiter and have lived across the world. So I'm grateful for that, but yes, from Detroit. Okay. Wow. Across the world. Um, that's interesting. My uh my mother's family is from Arkansas as well. And, really? Uh, of course. Well, from part? Detroit as well. Uh I think it's Little Rock, to be honest. Not planned. Okay, yeah, so we're from Little Batesville. Rock. So Batesville mm-hmm. is about an hour and a half outside of Little Rock. And we're mm-hmm. also from Pine Bluff. And that's probably mm-hmm. about maybe four thirty, forty five minutes on the other side of Little Rock. So okay. you all are in, we're in hallowed ground. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. All right. So let's jump into this. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> all right. You have an organization by the name of Cannabis Advisory Group, LLC. What is that? Sure. It's cannabis. It's discussing the business of the cannabis industry. Um, and it's spelled with a K. People don't know that the Latin derivative of cannabis starts with a K. And so mm. I took that. And the premise of what we do is educate, enlighten, and empower. 
Um, I believe that we can't create any opportunities unless we have the correct information, the adequate right. information in order to be able to move. And, and so with cannabis being an international billion dollar industry, it was important for me to create something that would serve as a resource for black and brown um, people who have been disproportionately um, set aside in everything that America offers and specifically mm -hmm. in the cannabis industry. Yeah, so I, I'm curious, when did this uh, organization begin? So let's let's talk about that. Sure. And then I got um, a follow up. Okay. <laughs> I started back in what, 2014, 2014, mm. 2015. I don't know if you remember, you probably didn't follow around that time. Vice had a show called the Breckenridge Social Club. And so it was mm. Breckenridge, Colorado, and it was on their main thoroughfare, and they had a dispensary. And so I'd watch this show. And so one day, uh, the gentleman had a quarter of a million dollars in the bag. Of course, he was not a person of color. And he was driving by the penitentiary. And he said, I wonder how many people are in jail for doing exactly what I'm doing right now. And I said, mm-hmm. And that was just kind of like an epiphany for me. Because I don't know, people know present day, there are over 40,000 individuals who are still currently incarcerated for mm. marijuana offenses. Mm. And so that resonated with me because I have a business background, um, educated in business, um, proud to hail from University of Pennsylvania, the Wharton School of Business, um, the best business school in the nation. <laughs> and so in understanding that, I was like, okay, Colette, there's something here. And I knew that it was something that didn't speak to us because normally we are trained and we only move in spaces that we've been told that we can go, most of us in corporate space. And I just knew that I could do something else. And so I was excited about it. And of course, all my family thought I was crazy and I never consumed, wasn't an issue for me. And I told everyone, I don't care about getting people high. They're like, oh, now you're a drug dealer. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and shout out to all the drug dealers because <laughs> I'm just gonna fast forward it. Wharton School two years ago just created an investment group for cannabis. So all the cats I knew from Wall Street and everybody who was in corporate left those jobs. So now they're drug dealers too. So, hey, there's something to be said about the change of America. And I just knew that it was a space to be in, just to, to plant yeah. my foot in and to become educated. Yeah. yeah, I want to dig in a little bit more there. That's kind of where I was headed with that first question. So in 2014, right? Yes. And that's a different time than we're in in 2022. Um, what was going on legally with marijuana at that time? Just medicinal. We still had okay. just a few states that were playing around with the conversations. Uh, definitely Colorado was the everything for cannabis at that time. So literally mm -hmm. it was just Colorado and California. You know, California yeah. came into play in 1996. So California has been, you know, the OG, if you will, um, mm -hmm. in the industry forever. And so Colorado was just getting into play then. And it was, it was literally medicinal. Mm -hmm. Like you, you, you were a caregiver. Caregivers were the growers, the cultivators, and then they had their patients. And then anything extra that you had, you could sell to the dispensaries. And that was the conversation. It was only medicinal. Yeah. Did you have any inclination where the business was headed in 2014? And, and is that kind of what led you into it as well? Or did you just feel like there was a need there without kind of that foresight of where, where the business was headed? Sure. Um, I believe that I, I had a foresight. I came, I come from a background of entrepreneurs. Um, mm -hmm. My father had a liquor store. Uh, one of the first black men to own a liquor store in Arkansas. So mm -hmm. growing up wow. as a child and seeing that experience and understanding supply and demand, and especially mm -hmm. when you talk about um, an industry that had prohibition attached mm -hmm. to it. And so yeah, that's absolutely. just how I looked at cannabis as, okay, so now if it's becoming a little comfortable in a minute, it's going to go burst into this thriving economy and just get ready for it. So no one else has to see it, but it's coming. That's really good. That's a little bit of history mixed in there. And I'm a history teacher by trade. So you talked about the prohibition. That's interesting. Um, prohibition was a mistake. 
uh, America had a had an idea about stopping alcohol and that that didn't work. People kept drinking. I think it works the inverse though with with marijuana. Um, they they outlawed it, but people did it anyway, <laughs> right? And so now it's coming back around. Of course, the consequence of that has been the uh, criminalization of it and what it do does to our people, right? As well. But before we get deep into that, let's talk a little bit more about this transition. So, 2014, you have foresight, but the the industry is not there yet. How is life different in the industry now? Sure. Um, specifically in my life, now everyone is like, you were right. And we should have been listening <laughs> to you. And so I'm like, uh-huh. So that's how <laughs> that one is. And then from the industry, cannabis now, it's cannabis. It's not mm. weed. It's not pot. Mm. The language mm. is different. Right. Yeah. So that's first mm. and foremost. So that helps when we start talking about indoctrinating people into a, a lifestyle switch or specifically in the pandemic. Think about mm -hmm. it. What was essential? Food, gas, liquor, mm -hmm. weed. <laughs> those were the same, all those four across the country. <laughs> And folks needed things <laughs> to help them cope through the pandemic. And mm. that's what it is. And the truth mm. of the matter is cannabis, weed, wow. marijuana has just gotten a bad rep. Because mm -hmm. today's cannabis is not your grandmother's cannabis, if I mm. can say that. So before, mm -hmm. people didn't know what they were consuming. Um, they didn't mm. know how people were growing it. You know, mm -hmm. some of the OG Acapulco gold, like they're just certain names. <laughs> that's what people smoke. Now it's literally for medication. It's to yeah. medicate you. So if you have insomnia, if you have issues with hunger, I mean, every state now has a litany of provisions, mm -hmm. things that you have to be able to qualify for initially to get medical. And now recreational is in place. You don't have to be anything but old enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's really an interesting topic for me. I'm somebody that has never partaken in it. Uh, I don't see myself partaking in it at any point. Um, but I do uh, believe in people having the right to partake in it. I like a little bit of alcohol here and there. And I wouldn't want anybody telling me I couldn't have any alcohol when I so chose to do so. So that's like, that's kind of the way I feel about marijuana. The only thing I will say that I have an issue with marijuana is the smell. So if we can get that to kind of go away. And if I'm, the, the other issue I would think is if I'm with people that are smoking, then I'm in the smoke, you know? Sure. So if I'm with people that are drinking, I'm not in the drink with them, right? Okay. So these are problems I'm putting out into the universe. I would love to party and hang out with people that are smoking marijuana while I'm drinking, but I don't want to be smoking marijuana with them. If okay, that so makes let me tell sense. you, so let, let's look at it a couple of ways. A, mm -hmm. I want to go back to this great point that you made about that you might not ever use cannabis for anything. You don't foresee mm -hmm. that, right? Right. I thought that same thing until uh -oh. I became of age when I was dealing with premenopause. And so uh -oh. as a woman, you don't, you wouldn't have this experience, but as a woman, when you go to your ob gyne and they say, okay, mm -hmm. you're entering into your hot flashes and all of these wonderful life advancements. And we got two options for you. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, what are those options? Well, we can put you on a steroid that's addictive. Mm -hmm. And once we mm -hmm. put you on it, you can't wean yourself off of it. Mm. or wow. just another steroid. And I said, okay, what's three? Go past three, go, go. I, I don't get another option. Mm -hmm. He said, no. I said, oh, no, no. I'm not mm. going to take a substance that's going to get me addicted. I'm yeah. not trying to pump my body with steroids. And so let me go to the plant. So to your second point, there's so many ways to consume now. And then you have mm -hmm. to determine why people are consuming. People aren't consuming nowadays just for recreational. I mean, and how do you consume? It's in edibles now. You have wine. I, oh, shout out amazing woman here, Wine with Ja. She has an infused mm -hmm. wine brand. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to consume now. And food, I mean, the fastest growing segments are seniors and women. Women, mm -hmm. there are some women who smoke. But majority, they like to consume. You got gummies. You have candies. You have mints. Come mm -hmm. on. This, you can okay. be around folks all day that are uh, consuming. <laughs> you don't even know it because they're not even smoking. Uh, 
Good point. <laughs> I probably party with some and didn't realize. Probably, you probably will. That's what I'm talking about. Mm, and then you never know right. for your ailments. And so they, then we'll get there. I know that you will. The difference mm. with CBD and THC, mm. because you say you might not consume, but you might have problems with your joints. That's CBD. That's a salve. Oh, that's anything that's that. below 0.3%. So it's CBD, it's hemp below 0.3. Once you get above 0.3, then that's THC. That's the psychoactive. Mm -hmm. But you're, we're addressing things that are just your physical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you have this business background, but you also are uh, have a podcast. And the podcast and is called? Cannabis. Discussing Cannabis. the business of the cannabis industry. Yeah, so if people tune into the podcast, what is it about? Give us sure, a, it's give it everything, idea. every week, I either, I either address something from legislative, medicinal, recreational, mm -hmm. all of the above, international business. So we can talk about, um, I just had Dr. Weeds on from South Africa, what legislation mm -hmm. looks like in South Africa, uh, my conversations with Gahanian women and helping to empower them just through the development mm -hmm. of hemp opportunities i'll sit mm. and talk to you about the stock market how you should invest in cannabis there isn't an mm. industry that you can present to me that i can't equate it to cannabis mm. and so that's my conversation every week about how do we best understand this industry it is not a taboo anymore it is it is a lifestyle now it is a way of life and it is a billion dollar industry that we're missing out on mm. wow so where can people find your podcast? Drop that sure. for us. Absolutely. So they, as a replay, they can go to cannabis.tv. That's K-A-N-N-A-B-I-Z dot TV. Or it's a live stream on handradio.org. So that's mm. if you want to see it every Thursday at 2 p.m. and see me. If you want and immediately afterwards, you can see it on Cannabis TV. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So my next question is, because you have quite a career in business, right? You've done quite a few things. Um, and now, would you say your career is cannabis centric at this point? Absolutely. Or are you dibbling and dabbling in other things as well? Everything for me is cannabis. <laughs> so, yeah. so I think it's really interesting because I've been blessed to have full career. Um, advanced work for the White House under Clinton Gore, uh, Director yeah, of Communications yeah. for State Senator. Shout out Vincent Hughes, husband of Cheryl Lee Ralph, who just won Never Give Up on her Emmy. Um, then I was Vice President of the M&A firm, Mergers and Acquisitions. So yeah. in everything, though, it has prepared me for cannabis because you yeah. have to understand politics. That's all my political background has been, lobbying, policy, what does that look mm -hmm. like? Um, the mm -hmm. ultimate end for the constituent, how to be able to add protest and policy. It has to be protest mm -hmm. plus, those kinds of things. And then you talk about the financing. That's huge in this industry. How are you mm -hmm. able to fund your projects and what that looks like? Real estate. So everything that I've been a part of my life and my career has prepared me for this conversation because everything that I do now centers around cannabis. There's yeah. just no other way. I can't live any other kind of way. So if somebody oh, is watching our podcast and they are thinking about getting into the cannabis industry, they're, they're thinking about opening up a cannabis uh, joint. <laughs> no pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> right, right. Uh, literally no pun intended, but it, I guess it worked. Um, uh, what's, what's one or two things that you would advise them to do? Sure. I want you to find your sweet spot. And so when I say that is be good, know what you're good at, and then create mm. a business model outside of it. You, everyone mm. doesn't have to have a dispensary. Rule number mm. one, everybody stop. Everyone does not have to <laughs> open up a brick and mortar dispensary. Everyone okay. thinks that that's how you're going to make your money in cannabis. No, mm. you don't have to do that. Um, mm. a shout out. I have a, one of my best friends now who's a licensed sex therapist. Mm. creating products for her to advise for her clients and enhancing their intimacy. What does that look like? Real mm. estate. Real estate offerings. You develop the real estate. Your client happens to be cannabis. If you're an accountant, mm. 
you diversify in your portfolio to be able to add those business offerings for a cannabis client. If you're in the insurance industry, you add an expertise so that now you can do and write up writers for cannabis industry. You want me to keep going? You're an educator. No. <laughs> you can sit up and write. Shout out to Higher Learning out of First Black um, Higher Educational Institute to get you certification for cannabis right in Pontiac, Michigan. Mm. We can keep going. Anything. I could law. <laughs> I mean, where you want to go? We can go. Preachers. <laughs> I've had conversations back and forth with preachers who fought me tooth and nail in the beginning. Colette, you're trying this, that, and the other. I said, well, no, you should just embrace cannabis from the political standpoint to expunge records. Because if you mm. expunge records, then people can get jobs and then maybe they'll tithe more into the storehouse. You understand? We can meet you wherever you are with this industry. All right. So the cannabis <laughs> cannabis advisory group, people reach out to you in what ways to get uh, cons consultation, I would everything, assume? Everything. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. get conversations about creating legislation in mm -hmm. states that need to understand what that looks like, specifically social equity for people of color. Uh, I get calls, I create business plans, I create performers, financial models, I identify real estate deals, um, just mm -hmm. completed a hedge fund round for a client, one out of Oklahoma for $4.5 million, another one out of Michigan for $3.5 million, so I'm facilitating those hedge fund negotiations, you name it, I, yes, I get calls, and normally, and if I don't get a call, I'll create it for someone, because the majority mm -hmm. of the time, we don't know what to do. So yeah. my job is just to be of service and create. Yeah. Um, so how how do how does how does somebody reach out to you? Drop that sure. information. Sure, mm -hmm. sure, sure. So um I tell everyone and I do this all the time and no one ever does it. My phone. My phone is real simple. 313 422 5751. It stays mm -hmm. on my hip. That's what it is. You call me. You have access to me. I'm not complicated. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go through all my emails. I have those if you want to. But it's mm -hmm. easy. I get a phone call. Text me. Hey, I saw you on the show. Dripping in black. Mm -hmm. Hey, okay, no problem. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they can call you with anything, any questions regarding any question, can, the cannabis any, industry. In, in any place around the world. You can, if you okay. want to know what, it, what the legislation looks like in Europe, I can tell you. If you want to talk about what it looks like in Thailand, what New Mexico, we're just having a fight about legislation. For I, I got you. Whatever, wherever mm -hmm. you want to go with it, we can go. How do how do you measure um how do you measure the success? How do you how do you measure I'm doing what I want to be doing? What are some some indicators or some markers for you sure. in your business? Uh -huh. Sure. First key factor that I'm having a conversation with you. Oh so clearly, <laughs> thank you. So thank someone you, was kind you. enough to be able to understand the value and then introduce me to you. That's mm. what it's about. It's about All conversations. Right. As long as I can keep talking about it and it's mm. resonating with someone and we connect, that's what it's about. Because mm. I tell people the majority of the time, you might not ever be an entrepreneur in this space, but I want you to be able to make the most of this industry in your lifetime and for generations to come. And that's from anything. From, mm -hmm. you've heard Al Harrington and Viola. He's a multi-state operator. They're huge in the Michigan market. I don't know if you've heard the story of how Viola started, but just briefly, his grandmother, grandmother dealing with glaucoma, all his life she had problems with her eyesight. Um, of course, he was in the league doing his thing, and it got so bad that she couldn't even read her Bible. And he was like, mm -hmm. look, Grandma, we're going to have to try something. He gave his grandma canvas. Mm -hmm. He hadn't heard, he said he was a little apprehensive. He didn't hear in the room. He didn't know if he had given her too much. <laughs> and grandma passed out. He goes into mm -hmm. the room and she's sitting, he looks up and she's crying. And she says, this is the first time in years I've been able to read my Bible. Mm -hmm. So wow. when you understand what this is and what it can do and, it, and the business behind it. I mean, Michigan averages $155 million a month. Michigan is number eight in the fastest growing market for cannabis. People mm -hmm. are right here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. You got to understand what's going on. It's here. If you don't <laughs> understand, how can you best equip yourself in anything? It's not just knowledge is power. Applied mm -hmm. knowledge is power. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out a way to ask this question that I like to ask. I, I ask it this way. What, what's next for you, right? So you're doing what you're doing with your advisory group. You have your podcast. What would be the ideal next level uh, for you? <laughs> sure. So I guess I can share this with you. Um, and this is no one else knows this. So I guess it's oh, breaking, breaking news. news. Breaking <laughs> news. Da, 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 da. Dripping in black. So uh, mm, first fiscal. Don't get Sean no ideas. Yeah, I did. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, fiscal 2023, I'll be launching the Wellness Shopping Network. So mm. it is everything where the plant is our medicine. And it mm. is just that. It is a shopping network where you will be able to talk and have conversations to address all the products that are CBD, THC, hemp, mm. from food, edibles, cosmetics, shampoos, lotions, hemp creek, you name mm. it. So mm. that is my baby. I'll be kicking that off. And uh, it transcends color, class, it's international. It provides access. And mm. so that is that is my ultimate right now. And then after I launch that and we go ahead, I just want to go down and be on a farm somewhere. I'm just going to go <laughs> just going out to the pasture and just be cool out on the farm. I'm happy okay. with that. Uh, that. That sounds pretty cool. That sounds pretty awesome. Uh, my follow-up to that is the, the Dripping in Black podcast goes out to the world. So you have a worldwide audience. How can our audience support you in your next stages, what is something oh. tangibly that they can do to get to support you getting there? Oh, that's so kind. Thank you. Um, a, uh -huh. well, you support me by continuously supporting Dripping in Black, so that's a oh, that gives <laughs> us this platform. And then, mm -hmm. of course, you all have me back when I do the official launch of the network. Uh -oh. That would be great. And then okay. it's the direct connectivity to the network, and they'll be able to see all the shows and engage that way so that's how they can help continuously tuning in and sharing information okay that's what's up drop again uh the information where they can contact you where they can find your podcast just in case they missed it earlier sure you can go to www.cannabiz.tv k-a-n-n-a-b-i-z dot tv and my telephone number is area code 313-422-5751. Yeah. All right. So we got all the easy questions out the way. And now it's time <laughs> nice. for us to get down to the most difficult question that we ask every guest. It leaves them flat footed. So we'll just, I'll just kind of give you that in advance. They, they really are stunned by it and don't really know how to respond. So if you feel that way, just know you're in good company. And then we'll kind of help you out of that that state. So are you ready for the question? I'm ready for the question. <laughs> Have you ever been on the cover of a magazine? Yes. Oh, you have. <laughs> Do you yes. remember the magazine? It was uh, Philly Hair. And oh. I used to have a strawberry blonde asymmetric style. And so I was the model on the cover of the magazine and in the movie theater. Wow. That, I say, is probably the most impressive response we got to that one. Oh, okay. However, we are all about outdoing that. We're all about showing our guests what we're all about. And dripping in black means excellence, right? It's an attitude. So one of the things that we do for all of our guests is we place them on our cover, the Dripping in Black magazine cover. So S Squared is going to show you your Dripping in Black magazine cover. Aw, that's so cute. Yeah, <laughs> that's me <laughs> with the glasses. Oh, don't I feel comfortable? <laughs> Love it. All right. Thank so you. that is also uh, a parting gift. We will laminate that and send oh. it out to you as a thank you. Okay. for coming out and uh sharing your story with us and uh if you look over my shoulder you see quite a few of our dripping in black magazine covers from our first and second seasons and then there are two people you know you got connection with the democratic party 
there are two people that we would love to have on they're at the very top those aren't our magazine covers. We have right. them for I them. I see. Though. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> as soon as they it. show up on the show, we will give them their magazine cover. So, you know, we'll talk offline and get them on. Perfect. Uh, yeah. All right. But well, we want to thank uh, Colette Ramsey for coming on and sharing our story, sharing her story. <laughs> I'm adding my story to yours. But sharing her story, we want to remind our audience that the DIBK Drip Shop is open. Go to DIBKDripShop.com to cop the latest Dripping in Black merch. And as always, a huge thanks to all of our listeners, viewers, supporters, and subscribers. And until next time, be kind, be loving, and be excellent on purpose. It is a choice. Up next on the Dripping in Black podcast, we're going Hollywood and speaking to set lighting technician Robert McTire. It was crazy because when I first got the job, um, I was thrilled. Uh, then yeah, know, give me that reaction. Were you pumping your fists like, yeah? Or yeah, how did you I was. I was. <laughs> first of all, I'm a huge Jordan Peele fan. I mean, yeah, I love. I love Get Out. I love Us. And here I am with this opportunity, and I couldn't believe that I, I'm working on a Jordan Peele movie. Uh, absolutely. It's third film. <laughs> yeah. And when the reality hit me that, you know, that this is really a thing, yeah, I was, I was in a bit of a daze when I realized that I actually got the job. And then I was filled with, like... You know, I didn't want to screw this up. just experienced a Dripping in Black production.